Professor Dion Rousseau, CEO of Ethics SA, joins us now. And uh, we said, uh, what can we learn from Nkandla Gate or Nkandla, that whole scandal? But let's move it to the corporate area or the semi-corporate and semi-state area. Prasa, let's have a look at that first. There's been so much news and every day more comes out. The interesting thing of, about a scandal when it breaks is probably the, the worst strategy of handling it is trying to avoid it. Mm. Um, the best thing that, that, that you can do, and I think history has proven this over and over again, is to be as frank, as open, and to communicate openly about this. Because the moment that people get a sense that you are trying to hide it, they get more suspicious mm. and you actually invoke more interest. Mm. One of the things that I think always baffles me about South Africa, especially if you look at our good governance policies and how we adopt all of these uh, uh, policies, we certainly seem to get getting things on paper really well. Where are the biggest vulnerabilities for corporates uh, that potentially lead to unethical behavior? <coughs> well, it, it's always that, that balance between uh, self-interest and the interest of other people who are affected by it. And I think mm. human beings are simply constituted in that way that we tend to focus on our own interest. And, and, and I think we should all understand that as human beings, we are fallible, we will make mistakes. Um, but so much more so in the case of corporates that are complex uh, 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 organizations. And it's a matter of fact that sooner or later you will be implicated in some form of wrongdoing. Mm. And the important point is how do you handle it? Because there are more productive and less productive ways of handling it. Mm. Well, let's get back to the railway uh, issue. It seems on the one hand that people's credentials weren't checked, their qualifications weren't checked. The trains are the wrong size for our, I mean, these are elementary things which you yeah. think would have been checked. But as you say, the response, the response to me doesn't look as if uh, they've admitted the problem. Uh, it's more that stuff is leaking out like sludge. Yeah. In other words, it has to be pulled out. Yeah. And, and then you look doubly worse. In, in the sense, you look bad for what has been done, but you look even worse for the way in which you have handled it because yeah. there's not the perception that you can be trusted. I've listened to your previous conversation and it's all about trust and what scandals do is that they destroy the trust mm. and you have to rebuild it. And one way of rebuilding it is to be seen, to be open and honest, to communicate, to admit what has gone wrong. Yeah. And, and I think uh, what, is, what is extremely important is that when there is an investigation, as you normally have after incidents of this nature, that you should be seen to cooperate fully with that investigation and not to interfere with it, yeah. because then you actually aggravate the situation. How would you describe the corporate culture when it comes to actually instituting penalties uh, on the back of, of, of certain discoveries? Do you, how and how do we compare, for example, to other markets that might have a harsher approach to then holding you accountable and acting on that accountability? Uh, well, uh, um, I think we are seeing a, a global pattern emerging <coughs> and that the penalties for, for wrongdoing is becoming ever more severe. Um, but that is only one of the parts mm. of parts of the price that, that you pay. And some of these penalties, if you take a company like Siemens, who we were implied for uh, corruption on, 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 a, on a big scale around the world, the penalties that they paid were huge. But, but talking to people in that company, they admit that there are other things uh, that are equally costly, not in terms of money, but in terms of time, of effort, and of humiliation. Mm -hmm. And that what you often get in the midst of a situation like that is that you start losing your good people because they don't want to be associated with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe we're doing well in the sense that these things do come out. The media is pretty free in South Africa yeah. and uh, in a way these failures come out, is it because of good governance sometimes that we, we have got some checks and balances in place to get the rot out? Yeah, well it's, it's uh, on the one hand uh, our own internal risk management systems that detect these things early on, which is a good thing. And by the way, you're often, you're always better off when you discover something and disclose it yourself mm. than mm. waiting to be, to be found out, mm. because then once again, you look doubly bad. Mm. <coughs> so, so I think on the one side it is this, because our corporate governance systems are rated very highly um, in the world. But I think we should also give a lot of credit to the media, because if we take the Praza case, yeah. and if we take a few other cases, um, it was the vigilance of the media yeah. that really brought these things, and it was not the internal risk systems yeah. that picked them up. Yeah. 
And just as a, a, another way of going back to state-owned enterprises, I mean, if we look at the institutions that are tasked with uh, probing and bringing mm. to light some of these occurrences, like uh, the Office of the Public Protector, are we on a trend that increasingly undermines uh, such institutions, or do you get a sense that they're getting sharper teeth uh, within the South African context? <coughs> well, the, the interesting thing is that they are surely challenged, that they're under pressure. And there's, if you take your example of the Public Protector's Office, that there's, there's huge challenges. But I think there's also tremendous support. And it would be interesting now that things seem to be going, especially uh, to go back to Nakandla, to the courts, where these things will be tested. Um, I, I think we need to understand our institutions are still very young and lessons need to be learned and we need to, to still discover in some cases exactly mm -hmm. what their powers are. Well, that was Professor Dion Rousseau, CEO of, CEO of uh, Ethics SA.